What's going on guys and welcome back to Pro Speed Baseball. Now in hitting, timing is absolutely everything, but with proper mechanics, we can make timing much, much easier. So if you've ever been up at the plate with any kind of velocity, whether it's in practice or the game, and you just can't quite get around on it, but you're seeing the ball really well, yeah, you're gonna wanna pay close attention to this video because it could be easily a mechanical thing and not the fact that you're not seeing the ball as a good hitter should. Now, the most likely culprit is not releasing the bat first and foremost properly, and secondly, releasing the bat on time. Now, in today's video, we're going to show you how to do both of those and give you one extremely simple drill to start learning how to release the bat properly and on time. Let's go ahead and get started. So guys, releasing the bat seems to be a foreign concept in the baseball world because I don't really hear about it being talked about very much. We need to understand that everything that we swing with a lever, whether it be tennis, golf, baseball, softball, anything that we're swinging, swinging that hatchet at a tree, there's going to be a sequence where the, where the lever is going to lag and then there's going to be a release. So where a lot of instruction talks about anything similar to a release is they're talking about delivering the bat to the ball. The most popular thing I hear is that we want to rotate our body. We want to turn all the big muscles and hit the ball with our rotation. We want to get rotational power with what we're hitting. Guys, rotating the body is extremely, extremely slow. Our upper body, our lower body, our hips, everything cannot rotate very fast. What we need to understand is that we need to understand that we need to use the part of our body that can deliver the bat to the ball the quickest and with the most amount of speed. So why rotating into the ball is going to hurt your game is that it's going to take a long time not only to get the bat to the ball, it's also much slower. What we're going to need to do is we need to learn how to release the bat. So if you see, saw our how to release video in our pro-speed hitting system, we talked about unhinging the wrist and rolling over the hands. When we get into this lag position, the wrists are hinged back. To release this lag, we need to unhinge the wrist. The wrists are hinged back in a lag we need to unhinge them to release the bat. If we're trying to rotate our body, we're never releasing the bat. We are rotating. So very simple way to explain this, guys. If I try to get the bat from one side of my body to the other, which is what we do in a, in a baseball swing, if I try to just use my body, it takes a very slow moving part of my body a long time. We can say impact is here. It's going to take a, a very slow moving part of my body a long time to get the bat to impact. If I use my wrist, which is the main generator of speed in the swing, it takes a very short amount of time and I get a ton of speed going into impact very, very easily. So not only does it take a lot less effort to get the bat to impact, it's faster. It's faster to impact, it's quicker to impact, and there's more speed. But the main thing we need to understand is when we start unhinging the wrist or releasing the bat. If you know from the, the pro speed hitting system, we talk about the max lag position. And that position is when we transition the bat, when our hands pause before they get to our torso line. If we go ahead and load stride here, we can draw a line right down the torso. When the hands get to that line, not touching it or past it, when they get to that line, that's when our bat reaches its maximum angle. Meaning the maximum lag we're going to get is the sharpest angle we get between our bat and our forearm. That's going to be our max lag. From here, that's when the wrists need to unhinge. This is where the wrists need to start releasing to hit the ball, unhinging the wrist, the fastest moving part of the swing, into hitting this ball. Now, where most guys goof up is they get into this max lag position perfectly, and then they don't release it. They just keep that angle, they keep that angle, and then we end up dragging the bat and trying to release it late. So then it takes much longer, which is why we're having trouble hitting velocity or we're seeing pitches and just can't quite get the bat to the ball. So I'll show you what that looks like from the face on view. We load stride, we get into this lag position. If I release this properly, and I start unhinging my wrist, I get that bat there and just all my body's behind it with a ton of speed. If I get to this lag position and I don't unhinge my wrist, I start spinning and then this bat takes a long time to get to the ball. Now I know all this happens very fast, but a split second when we're hitting can make a huge difference for timing. So. How do we start learning how to release this bat from the max lag position? Guys, we have a very easy two-step drill that we're gonna do so that we understand how to start releasing this bat. What you can do is you can take a tee, put it straight up out of the ground, just kind of like I am, maybe about mid-stomach mid, mid height right here would be good, it's fine. And all you're gonna do is you're going to get into your straight arm release checkpoint 
uh, but with just standing straight up and down. So all you're going to do is you're going to put this bat straight off your sternum. You're going to hold both of your arms straight out. You're going to make sure you have a good door knocker over door knocker grip, which is going to allow our wrist to hinge and unhinge. And you're going to put this bat right up against the tee. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the bat back behind us and we're going to make sure it all comes back to the same place where we started at the same time. We're going to take the bat back and everything comes back at the same time. If we do this incorrectly, I'm going to take the bat back and I'm going to let my hands are going to pass the tee and then the head's going to get to the to the to the tee right here. We, that we do not this is a drag. This is a huge drag. We haven't released the bat. Then the second thing we can goof up is we can come back and we can try to flick the bat at the at the at the tee and then our hands never got back there. Well guys, we're creating almost this Y shape with our with our arms right here and what we're doing is we're going to come back and we're going to come right back into that y shape all at the same time so what i want you to do is i want you to be able to come back and don't do anything weird like pulling the bat back like this or anything just kind of swing the bat like everything fold up and fold back we're bending the elbows unbending the elbows unhinging the wrist unhinging the wrist all at the same time what that looks like from the down the line view is i'm right here i'm letting the bat come back everything's coming back at the same time so guys, I'm doing it at this pace. I'm gonna make sure I can get 10 of these in a row where I don't drag the bat or flick it, but I can get 10 in a row where I can come back all at the same time. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing on a ball that's on a tee at our normal perfect tee setup height. So we're going to get into our perfect tee setup. Our second part of this drill is we're just gonna make some easy swings off, off the tee with the same intention. So right here, I'm gonna create that same kind of Y shape with the release, and I'm gonna do the same thing I just did, but I'm gonna make some easy swings. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna re-deliver everything back at the same time, making sure that I'm not dragging or flicking the bat. So I'm gonna come back, and everything is gonna get there at the same time. So right there, I felt like I maybe had a little bit of a drag, so I wouldn't count that rep. I'm gonna put, set, set my impact position. I'm not worried too much about what my feet are doing right here. I'm gonna come back, there we go. Everything came back at the same time. Let me show you one here from down the line. Okay, we're gonna get set right here. We're gonna look at our impact position. We're gonna make sure that we're in, a, we're in our perfect T setup. We're at, uh, in our straight arm release checkpoints and all I'm doing is I'm coming back, trying to come back to that same place where I just started. We're gonna come back and guys, I'm telling you when you do it correctly, you can hit balls just like that. Good backspin line drives. But the main thing that this drill is going to do, it's going to show you that if you start releasing the bat on time, you can come back to this position easily. If you drag, you're never going to get there. If you flick, it's going to feel weird. But we need to understand that the bat releases from the max lag position. And if we don't start unhinging those wrists on time, it's going to be very difficult to be late. But if we do start releasing them on time, the bat is going to be able to get to the zone much quicker. It's going to stay in the zone a very long time. There's going to be more speed. So now that we can have more speed, we can watch the ball longer and hit the ball harder. All right, guys, give me 10 reps of each one of these drills where you can get 10 of them in a row correctly and then start having that same intention in your full swings where all you're going to do is you're going to get up there. When you start taking your full swings, you're going to look at your impact position, get in your load stride and try to get right back to where you were and start releasing the bat with a ton of speed and start really dominating your timing today. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed it, stay tuned. I got an even better bonus video coming up for you. Getting to the proper release point at the right time is insanely crucial, but we need to make sure we have a tight transition in the bat lag to be able to release that angle into the ball. I have a drill that I'm gonna play a preview of at the end of this video that's gonna show you exactly how to get that transition all with one simple drill. I highly recommend checking it out. Thanks again for watching, guys. Good luck with your swings. Good luck with your games. And we'll see you guys soon. Today, I'm going to show you the number one move that kills bat lag. But most importantly, we're going to do a drill that will instantly give you a tight transition into bat lag and have your swing look, looking drastically better today. The move that I'm talking about here is when we're going into our transition and the bat lays down and now the only thing that we have to rely on for bat speed is our pure swing from Mike Trout. He does this really, really well. You'll see as we pause him here in the max bat lag position, his barrel is really high and you can see that it's barely dipping into that line. You can imagine if this was a nail and this bat was a hammer, if I was trying to hammer this nail in like this, this would be kind of like me dumping the bat. But if I'm letting this hammer swing 
and slam into this ball over and over again, I'm gonna be very, very efficient. Now, I'm sure you guys are ready for it by now. Let's go ahead and dive into the wall drill. All right, guys, here we go, the wall drill. 